Okay, I uh, just wanted to make a video to help you with your Google Sheets lab this week. Um, I think probably the easiest way to download the data is to use this link underneath. Okay, you're going to see a link for my video directly underneath this one, so it's probably going to be the middle link, uh, the one that says you could use the Google Sheets document, but if that doesn't work, you can download it here. So that pulls up your data in another screen, and then you can click Download to download that data onto your hard drive and then see how it's downloaded here in my Google Chrome. Now I can go to Google and search Google Sheets and then I can open it up in a, in a Google document. So we'll go to Google Sheets uh, make sure you sign in too so you save your work you can click blank to open up a new Google Sheet and if you're all signed in you should be able to click file and open and then you want to upload that data set you could drag it if it's already in your uh, if, if you're using Google Chrome it's already on the bottom or you can click select a file from your device and just like find it in your downloads folder wherever it's been downloaded okay um, the other way of getting it the way we used to get it um, oh here I'll put the link in here I forgot yeah, I'll, I'll put the link in here. Um, would be from actually accessing the original Google Sheets file. Uh, that doesn't seem to be working. You don't seem to be able to copy and paste from that anymore, which is um, strange. Maybe it's some sort of like uh, like some way they're trying to protect the the files. But um, either way, so once you get your your data set, um, and we can start going through the instructions here. Um, so basically, we're doing a, a a hypothesis test for one mean for uh, the systolic blood pressure we're testing to see whether it's above 140 which is you know starting to get into the danger zone okay so what you want to do first is calculate the mean and standard deviation of this column of SBD SBP here sorry okay so I'm gonna type mean I'm gonna type standard deviation it's gonna be a sample standard deviation um, so to calculate a mean just like we usually do we type equals average open a parentheses and then this is where you click and drag the data you want to calculate the mean for oops there it is click and drag and then you can close the parentheses like I did up here and the same thing with standard deviation type equals stdv.s open a parentheses and then it's for the sbp column click and drag Close parentheses. So there's that's all we need for part one is the mean and standard deviation because we need that in order to conduct the hypothesis test. So to test the hypothesis, we need to calculate the test statistic. Uh, assume that the assumptions for the student's t test are met, and so we've got to calculate the test statistic using this formula. Uh, now this this is x bar. This is the sample mean that you get from this part here, 143.73. Okay, you subtract it by the uh, the population mean you're trying to test it against, which is you know the beginning of the unhealthy range, you plug in 140 for mu, plug in your standard deviation here, and then this the square root of n. N is your sample size, right? So you're it's the number of numbers we have in the data set. So if you scroll down, look, there is 161 minus the header column. So there's a, n equals 160. Okay, so you'll want to do that on some paper see if I can change this window so I can draw it. So you want to calculate on paper T is your uh, sample mean, which I've forgotten what mine is. 143 point something something. Now you can fill in the decimal. Subtract it by the population mean of 140. Divide by that standard deviation um, on your Google Sheets. Uh, divide by the square root of 160. So this is a number, this is going to be 23.677. Okay, so calculate that. That gives you your t-value, which is something we need in order to calculate our p-value. Okay, Remember, the t-value is like your test statistic. That tells you how significant your results are. Uh, we're going to calculate a p-value so that we can help us make a decision. Okay, But for part two, all you have to do is calculate t find out what that number is. 
Once you have three, then Google Sheets and Excel, they have this nifty function in here, equals t.distribution. Okay, uh, so we can start finding our p-value. You can go into Excel and uh, find an empty cell and type equals t.dist. And notice that it's going to give you the left tail. you got to think about whether you want the left tail or not. Uh, the first number that goes in here is your t-value that you just got from part two. The second number that goes in here is going to be your um, your sample size. No, degrees of freedom. Sorry, that's a little bit different. First blank is your t-value. Second blank is your degrees of freedom. So that's just n minus 1. We said there was, what, 160 numbers here? Yeah, there's 160 numbers here. So our degrees of freedom, it's n minus 1. So in uh, up here, we're going to do for our t distribution, still editing that up here in the upper. Actually, we can do it here. Put a comma, and then put 159 because there's 160 values, but we had uh, our degrees of freedom was is always n minus 1. And then for the last blank here, we're going to write true. Okay, and remember this gives you a left-tailed value. Okay, so 0 0.9212. That's the um, that is the left-tailed value under the t distribution. So you got to look at your alternative hypothesis. Do you want the left-tailed value or do you want the right-tailed value? If you want the right-tailed value, all you have to do is pull up a calculator and do one minus 0.9212 to give you your left-tailed value. Okay. So uh, that's your p-value, uh, depending on which one you choose, the left tail or the right tail value. And then you can make an interpretation on the hypothesis using that p-value like you've done in Newton. Okay. Uh, do, do, do. okay so are, are your results statistically significant for part four? That's where you use that p-value. And just use the standard cutoff of use 0 0.05 for a significance. Okay, use 0 0.05 for a significance level. And so what does that mean for your null and alternative hypothesis? Um, if your p-value is low, remember, you're supposed to reject HO. You're supposed to reject the null in favor of the alternative hypothesis. So I think that's it. That's all the calculations. You'll note that uh, if you're watching the video, this said false originally. Uh, it's my first time using this function in Excel. It's actually for what we need to do. We need to write true here, so just watch out for that. I think that's everything though. Uh, message me if you have any questions. If you're stuck in any of the parts of this video, let me know and I'll walk you through it.